Hi, I'm Amanda Call, and today I'm going to talk to you about studio setup tips and give you a little tour of my home studio. So you may have seen in one or two of my older videos that I didn't always have this space. I used to have a different studio space, a, a nice, big, luxurious studio space. But then, you know, the big pan de garden happened and uh, everybody's lives had to change a little bit and so currently for my various life reasons I'm in in my little tiny what I refer to as my pocket studio <laughs> that large studio space was kind of an anomaly over the years I have had many tiny studio setups corner of the living room corner of the bedroom corner of the whatever other room. The tiny studio is an art form that I have perfected, I think, over the years. Obviously most of us do not have the luxury of a large dedicated studio space, and hopefully I'll get my space back someday, but in the meantime this is what I'm working with, and it's very likely that you might be working with a smaller space too. So I thought I'd give you a little tour of the space that I'm using, and also offer some tips as to how you can best optimize your workspace as well. Ta-da! This is it. This is the, uh, the whole thing. It's approximately, uh, four feet by five feet. It takes up a generous portion of the very small room that it is in the corner of. <laughs> and, yeah, you're looking at the whole thing right here. This is my pocket studio. It is, in fact, in the corner of my bedroom, which is less than ideal. Uh, I'm not going to show you the rest of the room because that would be weird. But yeah, quick overview of where everything is. I have this nice little uh, built-in dresser cabinet situation that the previous owners actually cut a big chunk out of, which works great because then I can use this as my computer desk. You can see I have my tower, I have my monitors, I have my uh, other various accoutrements here, my printer is just on the other side of the tower just out of frame, I have my drafting table here behind me, um, you can see me sitting in my ratty old computer chair that I refuse to throw away, uh, tucked behind me as well, tucked under the drafting table, I have a drafting chair. There's some other bits and bobs tucked underneath things, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Next to the drafting table, I have my little tabaret. <laughs> it's, it's really an old vanity that I'm repurposing here. That's where all of the art supplies that I use all the time are, but that's, that's pretty much it. That's the setup. This is where I create all of my art. I mean, it's, uh, it's cozy, but it does work. From over here at the drafting table, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about ergonomics and handedness. Um, I, I'm crouched a little bit to get into the frame, but <laughs> this isn't normally how I work at my desk, thankfully. This would not be ideal. You need to pay attention to the way that your body moves and the way that you're comfortable while you're working. Obviously, ergonomics is important to make sure that you're not hurting yourself, but also just to make sure that you're comfortable enough that you can work well without being distracted by the position that you're in and where all of your stuff is. So, for example, I have my drafting table here. Again, I'm, I'm kind of hunched so that I fit into the frame, um, but between the adjustable height of the desk and the adjustable height of my seat, I can actually work at a very comfortable angle, kind of like so, for very long periods of time. Also, it's a nice antique, so it's adjustable. And so I can actually change the angle and adjust this from basically being sitting desk to being a standing desk, which now I really don't fit in frame. <laughs> the biggest thing when it comes to the comfort of any working situation, of course, is just to use it for a little while and see what your body is telling you. Are you getting any aching in your shoulders? Are you getting aching in your back? Are you, is your seat too hard? Is your seat too soft? You kind of have to use any setup that you put together for a little while and see what about the setup is working for you and what isn't, and make adjustments accordingly. I made some fine-tuned adjustments to this setup, even though I have a lot of experience setting these kind of workstations up after doing it, because you always run into stuff that's like, oh, 
I didn't expect that this angle wouldn't agree with me or this thing would be in the way. It's just something that you kind of have to respond to when you first start running into it rather than letting it become a problem for you. The handedness thing might seem really obvious, but I'm just gonna point it out anyway. Um, I'm right-handed, so I want to make sure that all of my tools are on my right hand side. <laughs> so while I'm working here at the drafting table, I can just reach right over and grab one of my tools. It's just, it's right there. They're right at a good height. That's why I used this repurposed vanity. Uh, they're right at a good height where I don't have to reach down. I don't have to reach up. They're just naturally right at the end of my arm, a nice relaxed reach so that I can very easily grab things while I'm working. Along with that, uh, light is another important consideration. Since I am right-handed, my light is on my left. So that way, if I only have the task lighting source that I'm working with, like if I'm working late at night, and if you only have room for the one task lighting source, then I don't want the light to be blocked by my hand and have a, cast, a shadow cast over what I'm working on. I wanna make sure my light source is on my left and my tools are on my right. Again, because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, you'd wanna reverse that. Tools on the left, light on the right. I will also point out another little quick note about lighting is that you've probably noticed that I do have these windows all around. Natural lighting is wonderful. And if you can get it, then absolutely you wanna get it. But the one thing to consider is you don't wanna be in a position where natural lighting is going to be causing a glare, beaming directly down onto your page and <laughs> screaming back up into your face and blinding you because the sunbeam is just like lasering right down at you. Thankfully, where this little corner is, I'm surrounded by windows, so I get a ton of natural light, but I'm on the north side. So the sun is never actually coming directly in any of these windows, so it's not glaring off my computer screen, it's not glaring off of my page. I have the benefit of ambient natural light without having the disadvantage, which is having the direct sun laser beam. Obviously I just kind of got lucky there because this was the space that was going to have to work for me one way or the other and that ended up being a nice perk. Obviously I'm not a god tier workspace nerd like Adam Savage, but one thing that he always refers to when he's talking about his workspaces that I absolutely will repeat here is uh, this principle he calls first, 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 the order of first, yeah I... Uh, the stuff that you use is the stuff you keep out and at hand <laughs> is the gist of it. For me, I have a three-tiered organization system and keeping your stuff organized and in its place in a tiny space is absolutely essential. So for my three tiers, tier one is the stuff that I use all the time. Stuff that I use, if not daily, then pretty close to it. That stuff is what's sitting here on the tabaret my side table. So this is where I have my pencils, my pens, my French curves, my lettering guide, my little, little little jar of water. All of the stuff that is right at hand, it's also all in open, easily accessible containers so I can see it and I can grab it and I don't really have to dig around much. And along with that, I have whatever I'm working on right now, right here on the board. I have my ruler right here on the board because these are the things I am constantly using and so they are going to be right close by and right out in the open. Tier 2 is stuff that I use regularly but not frequently. So that's something I need maybe once a week, maybe once a month. I know I'm going to need it probably sooner rather than later but I don't use it every day and that's the stuff that's going to get stored a down. A prime example of my tier 2 storage, I have a big old milk crate on the floor. Oh, this big old milk crate is where I keep uh, artwork that I just finished and have not filed away yet into my big old flat files. I've got paper, I've got various more papers, pencils, uh, miscellaneous art supplies that I don't use super frequently, my light box, um, backup sketchbooks slash sketchbooks that I very recently completed so I might need to reference still, that sort of thing. And that's all kept nearby but out of the way of where I'm working. I don't use the space past the end of my keyboard here for pretty much anything so it is close but not in the way of where I'm doing most of my work. So tier two I keep out of my immediate workspace somewhere where I'm not going to be bumping into it but close at hand so that I can reach it in a pinch if I need to. Finally I have tier three which is the stuff I use rarely and that is the stuff that I put in deep storage. Deep storage can mean whatever it has to mean to you for the space that you have. 
in a box under the bed, and on a shelf in a closet. Personally, a lot of my tier 3 deep storage is actually in my old studio space in a separate building that I can't access right now, except under, like, mask and stuff, precaution, whatever. Keeping all your stuff organized is a very important element of how to make a small space work well, but I've got such a small space, where am I gonna put any of my, like, tier 2 stuff? Where's it gonna go? Welcome to the space under my desk. <laughs> so when you're working with limited space, one of the places that it's really easy to underutilize, but which you absolutely want to get the most you possibly can out of is your vertical space. So under the desk here, I actually have a fair amount of stuff stored. I've got this little mini shelf where I keep usually my, my microphone that I'm using right now and my tripod that I'm using right now. Um, I've got space makers, which are the greatest invention to art supply storage ever. This is where my tier 2 storage mostly lives, on the floor. So I've got stacking containers that I can keep in this little shelf here of like my colored pencils and my ink pencils and other weird pens and stuff that I only use sometimes, that sort of thing. Oh yeah, my uh, dice box because all of my RPG sessions are online these days. I have my great big scanner down here. I do use my scanner fairly frequently. If I had a place for it up top, I'd probably put it up there, but it's enormous, so it lives on the floor. Also, notebooks that I am using currently end up kind of living on top of here just because they're easy to grab from the drafting table. That They don't really stop me from being able to use the scanner, so it's a perfectly good place for them. I have some copy paper that I'm semi-sitting on from right here. I have some more stuff tucked behind my drafting table as well for tier 2 storage. That's another great area because you're not really gonna put your feet past the stabilizing crossbar that's underneath the drafting table. In a lot of my other studio setups in previous spaces, I also tended to use a lot of the space up as well as in on the walls up above my drafting table and above my computer. I would build shelves, I would hang tools like um, triangles and French curves and rulers off the wall because then they were easy to grab onto but they weren't taking up a lot of space. They're the kind of thing that falls down and is kind of messy sometimes on desk space. Because of the window situation that you saw earlier, I can't really do up storage in this current setup, but can store a lot of things under here, under my desk. One thing you have to be careful with with this kind of storage space though is that this is, can very easily uh, turn into a place where you just kind of shove things and then it gets out of hand. So that kind of brings me to my next point. So when you're in a very small space, one of your primary enemies is clutter. Clutter and mess. And it's pretty much natural that stuff is just gonna pile up. You're gonna accumulate little bits and bobs and things that you just don't know what to do with right away and so you just kind of leave them and eventually they start piling up and causing problems for you. And that sort of thing can really get in the way of you working effectively. So periodically, it's a good idea to go through and just clean everything off. Uh, dusting. <laughs> I may have done this morning before I started filming. But also something you should do periodically, because it will help keep your space neater, which makes it easier to work. But also puts you in a better frame of mind to work too, because you're not distracted by like, ah, I'm surrounded by crap and I need to clean it up. Granted, there will always be uh, a catch-all place. But I find that it works better to have a designated catch-all place than to just let one develop organically, because when I let one develop organically, it turns into everywhere is the place. So I have my, my one little spot where I just put random, random objects. <laughs> this is the garbage spot. So you definitely want to be very good about controlling your clutter and keeping it from getting out of hand, trying not to let things get too cluttered up. I am not going to tell you to go full minimalist here, because I think it's important that if you're going to be creative, you also surround yourself by things that are inspiring. By all means, you should still decorate your space with your photos and postcards and your objet d'art, whatever it is that helps to keep you happy and keep you inspired. I personally have my little, uh, my little happy board back here in the corner with a bunch of, like, postcards that friends have sent me and, like, photographs and stuff. There's also some original art that I've bought from people hanging above it, but that's out of frame, so you can't, you can't see that. My little, you know, wasp's nest, and just, just random things that help to keep me inspired and, and give me something to focus on occasionally, other than the work that might be frustrating me.
Probably the most challenging thing about setting up a tiny studio space like this is finding the space for it to fit into your life. So what I mean by that is, like I mentioned earlier, this is in the corner of my bedroom. That's really not ideal. I mean, it's not great because it's not good to have the place where you rest and the place that you work be the same place, because then when you're trying to rest, you're thinking about work, and when you're trying to work, you're thinking about going to sleep. None of that is great, but it was the only space I had available in my house where my stuff would be safe and I knew I'd be able to work pretty close to distraction free. The big considerations for where you can put your studio space in your living space come down to, first of all, obviously the practical concern of where do you have enough room to set whatever it is that you need to create and have your materials arranged around you in a way that will be useful to you. But also, is it somewhere that's easy to get to? If it's a real pain to get into your space because it's say on the other side of an unheated garage and you don't want to go out there, or because it's behind a bunch of furniture that's arranged weirdly and it's hard to climb over and it's awkward, then you're less likely to work because you have put a literal obstacle between you and your workspace. So as much as you can avoid that, you avoid that. Also is your stuff going to be safe? I mean, it's not a great consideration to have to have, but if you like live with roommates that are maybe not as considerate or as careful around some of your things, then you have to consider if your things like expensive computers or your art supplies are going to be somewhere where they are safe and secure and where they will not be damaged. I personally have to consider keeping my things safe from my small children and also my small children safe from them as a lot of art supplies are, you know, kind of sharp and toxic and that sort of thing. You also want to try to keep yourself somewhat isolated from distractions. Granted, that can be difficult, especially if you live somewhere with other people. Other people are kind of inherently distracting. But if you have a space where you won't be distracted by, like, your TV or by roommates or other family members coming and going, then all the better. These are all things that, to whatever degree is the most important to you, should be considered when you're trying to pick out a space to turn into your small studio. With a smaller space, there are obviously going to be compromises, but the thing that you have to prioritize is making sure that your space is going to work for you instead of against you. Hopefully you can take some of these suggestions and tips and make them work for you and incorporate them into your tiny studio space as well. They may not be the studios of our dreams, but we can still make great stuff in them. After all, Brene Magritte famously never actually used a studio. He painted all his masterpieces at his dining room table. So, I mean, the space is not what makes great art. So if you found any of this information helpful, let me know down in the comments. If you want to, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel so that you can hear more art making tips and watch me make some more art from my little corner over here. Thank you, everybody, and I will see you next time. It's gonna creak its way back. Oh, it's stuck. It's stuck. It needs, it needs WD-40, I think. I need to grease this. It's actually just like, it's an antique, so it's just like big old metal bits. There we go. There we go. We'll get this readjusted. No, it goes the other way. Righty tidy lefty loosey doesn't work when it's like facing side on to you, you know?